Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Bryce Healy, coming with another update for you all. And Thanksgiving is right around the corner. It's the 13th of November right now. And so, of course, this video is going to be about diet and uh, all, the, all those different nuances around diet. Um, I have some travel coming up for Thanksgiving to go back to the States to see some family. And I'm looking forward to that. And uh, I guess what can be said about diet um, is, is interesting, actually. Just the other, a few days ago, a patient um, at one of the retreats I'm working at, she's in a different program than than what, uh, what I'm doing there. So I wasn't, I'm not involved with her direct medical oversight. But I'm there to provide uh, IVs and and bath treatment and castor oil pack treatment, you know, fun different fun stuff. Um, anyway, she asked me what uh, what I would recommend or tell a cancer patient as far as diet, um, sort of what would be a cancer diet essentially was her question, and so I took a moment to kind of just reflect on what she was asking and. Uh, it, it is kind of funny just being a doctor and seeing so many patients and having a certain perspective about health and taking care of this body that is what I try to relate to them and try to share. And so my answer to her was that the diet should be something that helps the body clean itself. It should be a diet that helps to wash and clean the tissues efficiently, um, and, and without too much aggravation or strain. And my answer to her regarding that, that the diet should be one that is tissue cleansing, I think it made her maybe reflect and, and think a little bit differently on her approach to what she's needing to do for her own self. She has cancer of, of some form. Um, and, and, you know, of course there's a lot of factors that go on with the development of cancer but definitely diet is a major aspect to look at and it's been pretty well established now that the cancer cells themselves cannot survive in a high oxygen concentration high alkalinity or at least what should be normal alkalinity for the blood so anytime we have those two factors established for the body and its blood constituents, then we know that the, the body is cleaning itself, it's maintaining a high uh, electrolyte level to have that type of alkalinity associated with it. <clears throat> Not only that, but with the high oxygen content, we know that the arteries need to be themselves free flowing and able to conduct the movement of blood to and away from the tissue site. And so anything that is going to be tissue cleansing is a diet that I would recommend for anyone. And one of the biggest factors to the things that we eat and how healthy they are for us is in fact how much of them we eat. And since Thanksgiving is coming up, I think that's a good reminder to have uh, about overeating is that even if the food that you're eating is the healthiest that it can be, if you overeat, it's going to be a strain on the body to try to digest, assimilate, and then eliminate whatever it can't process or use. And essentially, if we overeat, we're overloading that ability of our body to digest, and it starts to push things down quicker than normal transit and it tries to force elimination in a way to alleviate the pressure of the stomach. Um, basically overeating is going to be a major stress on the body and you're not going to be getting the, the beneficial nutrients out of it as, as much as you can be if you do overeat. And on that note, it's also been well studied that if you eat about 20% less than what you think would cause you to be full, then you're more likely to be reaching the appropriate intake level um, that you won't be stressing out the body. And I think maybe that's a good reminder for all of us for this Thanksgiving holiday is to consciously eat, 
consciously and mindfully eat. Uh, be mindful of what you're taking in and how much and how quickly. We always want to be masticating and chewing our food as well as possible to just enhance the, the pre-digestion that we can be doing for it. Um, in addition to that, anything that is going to be tissue cleansing is going to be recommended. Um, and for the most part, that are the living raw foods. So as much as you can, try to be eating raw um, those inherently just have tissue cleansing abilities with them because uh, the mineral content is not affected. There's no aspects of oxidation. Um, the, there's no aspects of degradation to the ions, to the electrons, to the protein structure. We allow our body to do all that work for us because it's designed to do it efficiently. And when given the means to do it, it will do it very well. And, and diet is a major factor that we have to tinker around with as it relates to our health. And there's, it seems like there's just a lot of different ideas circulating around what is a good diet. Just the fact that that patient asked me, what is a cancer diet? It kind of put into my mind that there's all these different perspectives. And as a physician, as a naturopathic medical doctor, uh, I believe it, I have a unique perspective on my ability to accumulate and put together things so that I can translate them to you all in a way that is understandable uh, as well as what can make the most sense is the most simplest and therefore would be the easiest to integrate and, and be something to, to have in your own toolbox. The end goal of it is to be your own doctor, and part of that is knowing about the different factors that influence our health, um, the different factors that will take away our health as well, is something I, I try to speak often about. And so the, the topic of diet, I rather try to stay away from any of the, the fad type influencing aspects of diet and rather try to look at it in a way that can make sense for our physiology and the process that we go through when we chew food and digest it. And that's been a big experiment of mine lately is switching up my diet. I've noticed a huge amount of inflammation come off as soon as I have made some changes. And I'm now at that point where I do notice uh, a lot better function the more raw food that I eat um, and it, it kind of does just have this aspect of cleaning you out you feel the nutrification happen you feel the invigoration of the life force happen um, and that's a distinctly different state than if I were to eat a few nights in a row of a cooked meal um, I do feel a lot different after eating cooked food regularly um, and I do notice that that eventually then leads to my body having a different smell if I eat those cooked foods regularly. And there's different factors to look at within all that. Um, uh, I think the largest factors with cooked food are aspects of the cooked oil and the lipid oxidation, the um, glycation end products that develop from cooking. And all of those are an oxidative stress for the body to try to deal with. And if you take that away, if you take out that cooked oil, that cooked food, then you're taking away a source of oxidation, a source of irritation, and the body is then more free to do what it wants to do best, and that is to help all of this function optimally. So just a quick little blurb about diet that I wanted to share because of this recent experience with the patient. It got me thinking that this is maybe something to share with you all, that our diet needs to be tissue cleansing and that are going to be things like the fresh pressed juices, the raw foods, um, and basically staying away from anything that would be um, processed, full of uh, processed sugar, um, anything in a box that has been degraded, shelved, preserved, and then is in some form that we need to then assimilate into uh, a recognizable food again. So 
I hope this serves as some inspiration. Again, I'm Dr. Bryce Healy, and stay tuned for a continual update stream on different thoughts that I have regarding health and wellness, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.